This is part 15 of C-Sharp interview questions and answers video series. One of our YouTube channel subscribers faced this C-Sharp question in an interview for an entry-level C-Sharp developer role. And here is the question. What is the access modifier of the default constructor in C-Sharp? The answer is simple. It is public. Let's prove this now. We have a simple console application here. Within the program class, we have the main method, which is the entry point into this console application. We also have a customer class here. At the moment, this customer class does not have an explicit constructor defined. So in C Sharp, if we do not provide an explicit constructor, a default parameterless constructor is automatically provided to this class. And the access modifier for that class is public. And let's prove this by using reflection. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get the type of this customer class using the type of keyword. And the type information that we get, we're going to store that in a variable of type type. On this type instance, we have get constructor method. As the name implies, this method is going to return the constructor of our customer class. And from the IntelliSense, notice this method expects type array to be passed as a parameter. For now, I'm going to pass an empty array. We'll understand the reason for that in just a bit. The easiest way to pass an empty type array is by using type dot empty types. This method get constructor as you can see from the IntelliSense, returns an object of type constructor info. So let's create a variable of type constructor info. And this class is within system.reflection namespace. So let's bring that in. I'm also going to name the variable constructor info with a lowercase c. On this constructor info object, we have is constructor property. We can use this property to check if the type that we are getting back from this get constructor is a constructor or not. Similarly, we can also check if the access modifier of that constructor is public or private. So I'm going to paste two lines of code here. Pretty straightforward code. All it does is prints if what we are getting back is a constructor and if the access modifier of that constructor is public. There we go. Both the property values are true. Now, let's quickly understand why do we need to pass a type array as a parameter to this get constructor method. Notice from the IntelliSense, this get constructor method searches for a public instance constructor whose parameters match the types in this specified type array here. In our case, we want this get constructor to return us the constructor from this customer class that does not take any parameters. That's why we are passing an empty type array. Now let's define an explicit constructor for our customer class. Let me include a parameter of type string for this constructor. Notice we have a null reference exception. Why do we have the null reference exception? Well, that's because this reflection code is not able to find the constructor that we want. By passing an empty type array, we are asking for a parameterless constructor. But this customer class does not have a parameterless constructor. That's the reason we see this null reference exception. To get this constructor that takes a string parameter, we pass a type array here. So new type array. And the types in this type array must match the types of this constructor. So we want a string type and for that we are going to use type of keyword and then specify the type as string. There we go. We don't have that null reference exception anymore. Now let's change the access modifier of this constructor to private and see what happens. Notice we again have a null reference exception. That's because by default, as you can see from the IntelliSense, this method searches for a public instance constructor. But now we have a private instance constructor. To get a private or protected instance constructor, that is a non-public instance constructor, we're going to make use of another overloaded version of this 
get constructor method i'm going to use this second overloaded version so to specify that we want a non public constructor we're going to make use of this first parameter binding flags we want non public instance constructor we specify that using this binding flags expression So basically, we are using the second overloaded version of this get constructor method, which takes four parameters. Using our first parameter, binding flags, we are basically specifying we want a non public instance constructor. And then for the second parameter, that is for the binder parameter, we are passing null. And the third parameter is our type array. And the fourth parameter is parameter modifiers. And we are passing null for that. So with all these changes in place, let's run our project one more time. Notice each public property is false. That's because our constructor here is private. Let's confirm it's actually a private constructor by checking is private property. There we go. Is private is true. What if the access modifier of our constructor is protected? On this constructor info object, notice we only have is private is public we don't have is protected to check if the access modifier is protected use is family property and then let's also change the label here to is protected there we go is protected is true that's it in this video thank you for watching